think the eyes have it. Clark. Jobs and Skills Australia Bill 2022. Jobs and Skills Australia National Skills Commissioner Repeal Bill 2022. Okay, being amendments, we will resolve into committee. Is it the wish of the committee that the bills be taken together and as a whole? There being no objection, it is so ordered. The question is that the bills stand as printed. Senator Cash. Thank you very much. Um, and Minister, when I go to the explanatory memorandum in the bill, it notes that the bill will establish a new statutory body within the Department of Employment and Workplace Relations and set out the initial functions of Jobs and Skills Australia. It also notes that the permanent model for Jobs and Skills Australia uh, is yet to be confirmed. Uh, when will the permanent model be confirmed? Minister. Uh, thanks. Uh, consultation is underway and we expect uh, the legislation to be uh, released early next year. Senator Cash. Uh, in relation to the consultation that you say that is underway, uh, when did this consultation commence? Uh, what does this consultation involve? Uh, and in particular, who are you consulting with? Minister. Um, thanks. So the uh, consultation started once the Legislation Committee released its report. Uh, that will be ongoing uh, in the lead up to the legislation uh, being released and the consultation has been with uh, all sectors involved, uh, including unions and industry. Senator Cash. Uh, could you take me through which unions you have consulted with? Minister. There's been consultation with uh, the peak body, the ACTU. Uh, and also the ETU uh, Education Union. Senator Cash. Uh, just in terms of the position of the National Skills Commissioner, uh, when does this position formally come to an end? Minister. Uh, that will be a week after royal assent. Senator Cash. Royal assent of this particular bill that we are currently having before us. Minister. Um, it would be the repeal bill that we're also debating. Senator Cash. Uh, in relation to uh, the interim head or the director of Jobs and Skills Australia, uh, what is the process that the government is going to put in place in terms of the appointment? Minister. Uh, it would be appropriate remuneration tribunal arrangements. Senator Cash. Could you just take us through what the appropriate remuneration tribunal arrangements are? And in particular, uh, obviously I assume, will you be going to market in relation to this appointment? Will it be an appointment that is uh, appointed by the Cabinet, directly by the Prime Minister? What qualifications uh, will you require this person to have? Minister. Um, it will initially be an interim appointment, uh, so the person uh, will obviously be very well qualified and we will seek to ensure that. Senator Cash. With all due respect, when you say the person will be very well qualified, uh, this is a role that I think in your summing up speech you said there has never been a greater need or time for Jobs and Art Skills Australia. Uh, so, with all due respect, I would certainly hope that they are going to be appropriately qualified, um, given obviously, to quote yourself, uh, or to summarise what you said, there has never been a greater time, uh, a greater need for Jobs and Skills Australia. I assume some form of thought has been given by the government to the qualifications that will be required uh, for the interim Jobs and Skills Australia director. And again, I ask you, apart from being appropriately qualified, what is an appropriately qualified person? What are the qualifications they will have? Minister. Um, obviously, we would seek someone who has uh, expertise uh, in the training sector, uh, experience uh, in uh, the education sector, 
uh, would be someone who we think uh, would be appropriate for such a position. Senator Cash. Uh, which unions um, have you discussed uh, the appointment of the Interim Jobs and Skills Australia director with? Minister. Uh, we have not mentioned names to any unions that we've met with. Senator Cash. Uh, which unions have you met with? What discussions have you had? And have the unions provided you with any names? Minister. Um, uh, all stakeholders that we've met with have put forward suggestions that they think would be appropriate. Senator Cash. Uh, and again, I will, uh, without verbling you, I'll get you to confirm that includes the unions have put forward names that they believe would be appropriate. Uh, what names have they put forward and what are the qualifications that these people have? Minister. As I said, uh, all stakeholders that we've met with, including unions, have put forward uh, suggestions of who they think would be appropriate. Senator Cash. I'm going to work on the basis that wasn't the name of the person. So again, I ask you, and if you're not going to say, just say, I'm not going to say, uh, what names have the unions put forward to you uh, and what qualifications uh, do, do these people have? Minister. Uh, I'm not going to reveal names that people have suggested, but uh, what I can confirm is I am very confident that the government will ensure that there's an appropriate appointment made to this position. Senator Cash. Uh, given the comments that Mr Albanese has made in relation to appointments made uh, and the way in which they say certain appointments were made by the former government, uh, can the minister guarantee uh, that this position will be advertised, it will go to market and there will be a, to quote uh, Mr Albanese, a proper selection process, it will not be a direct appointment? Minister. Um, because it's an interim appointment, uh, my understanding is uh, it doesn't need to go through that process for an interim spot. Senator Cash. Uh, I understand the answer that you provided. You said you understand it does not need to. With all due respect, though, the Prime Minister has made certain statements in relation to the way appointments are made. So can you guarantee that even though it is an interim appointment, that the Prime Minister will be true to his word? It won't be a direct appointment by the Prime Minister or by the Cabinet or by the Minister. It will be one that is advertised, goes to market, and a selection process is undertaken. Minister. Um, what I can confirm is uh, in the final form, uh, so not for the interim position, but when this is finalised, uh, it will go through that process. Senator Cash. Um, is the minister able to confirm if Mr Boyton will be the interim director? Minister. Um, uh, he won't be, uh, but my understanding is that uh, there have been uh, the government have uh, had very considered discussions uh, with that gentleman. Senator Cash. Uh, did the government consult the National Skills Commissioner or the staff at the commission where they consulted as part of establishing Jobs and Skills Australia? Minister. Um, the minister has had uh, very detailed conversations with Mr Poynton. Senator Cash. Uh, in relation to the very detailed conversations with Mr Boyton that you refer to, uh, when did these conversations occur? You said they were very detailed uh, conversations with an S, so I assume that means you, that there was more than one. When did these conversations occur, and in particular, when did the first conversation occur, and in what format uh, did this conversation or conversations take place? Minister. Uh, these conversations started uh, directly after the election, uh, and my understanding is they were in person. Senator Cash. Has the government made a decision 
in relation to who will be the Interim Job Skills Australia Director? Minister. No formal decision has been made. Senator Cash. So no formal decision has been made. Put aside a formal decision. Has an informal decision been made in relation to who the director of job, the interim director of Jobs and Skills Australia, will be? Minister, um, multiple candidates are being considered. Senator Cash. Uh, when you say multiple candidates, how many candidates? Minister. Um, uh, after an initial look and the net being casted quite wide, um, they have whittled that down now to uh, a number of potentials that due diligence has been done on. Senator Cash. And when you say a number of potentials, how many are we actually referring to? Minister. Um, there are two leading candidates that due diligence was being done on. Senator Cash. When does the government expect, or should I say, when will the government announce the interim director of Jobs and Skills Australia? Minister. Um, the intention would be to do it as soon as possible, um, but it is possible that. Uh, existing uh, an arrangement could be made with the existing staff. Senator Cash. Uh, as soon as possible, I might ask you if you could try and narrow that down to an actual time frame. Um, when you say it is possible that existing arrangements could be made in relation to, well, well, sorry, I don't understand. What does that actually mean, Minister? I can't give a timeline on a formal process. Um, to attempt, in an attempt to be a bit more articulate, uh, uh, the, um, in, uh, someone could be appointed from the existing staff because they're all departmental staff um, in an acting capacity. Senator Cash. Uh, just in terms of uh, Jobs and Schools Australia itself, um, why is Jobs and Schools Australia a functional agency of the department? unlike the National Skills Commission, uh, which is an independent agency. Minister. The, the agency is part of the department, is my understanding. Senator Cash. Sorry, again, I, I, I'll put the question again in case it was just misunderstood. Why is Jobs and Skills Australia, so you're establishing a new statutory body within the Department of Employment and Workplace Relations, why did you make this decision? When you look at the National Skills Commission, it is an independent agency. What was the rationale for this decision? Minister. Um, I don't agree that it is an independent agency. Senator Cash. Could I just take you to the explanatory memorandum again, uh, which notes that Jobs and Skills Australia will give effect to the government's commitments to tripartism. In relation to the words give effect to the government's commitments to tripartism, what does that actually mean? Minister. Um, that means that we engage with unions, uh, employers and state governments. Senator Cash. So in terms of giving effect to the government's commitments to tripartism, so unions, employers and state governments? What role does the government envisage unions will therefore play or uh, will have as part of the new organisation Jobs and Skills Australia? 
Minister. Okay. Um, there's a legislative requirement uh, that government consult with the stakeholders I mentioned previously. Um, and obviously, uh, if you had uh, or if you have been paying attention to the way the Albanese government is operating, um, we are always seeking to uh, engage and talk um, with relevant stakeholders. I think um, the best evidence of that um, is the uh, skills summit that we had um, and uh, having industry represented, having uh, workers represented um, was a key part, I think, of the success of that. Um, and that's obviously something that we think is important in this area as well. Senator Cash. Perhaps I need to be a little more explicit. Um, will there be a formal role for unions in relation to Jobs and Skills Australia? Minister. Yeah, it, 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 it's in the legislation that they're required to consult with. Senator Cash. If I go to the National Skills Commissioner Act 2020, when you look at the functions of the National Skills Commissioner, they include providing advice to the Minister or the Secretary in relation to Australia's current emerging and future workforce skills needs, the development of efficient prices for VET courses, the public and private return on government investment in VET qualifications, the performance of Australia's system for providing uh, VET or vocational education and training, issues affecting the state of the Australian and international labour markets, opportunities to improve access, skills development and choices for regional, rural and remote Australia in relation to vocational education and training, and to inform the public about those matters and to collect, analyse, share and publish data and other information about the matters mentioned um, above and to inform policy development and program delivery. So that's the National Schools Australia, the, the, current, the current act that's in place. When you then go to the explanatory memorandum in relation to this particular bill, it notes the functions of Jobs and Skills Australia are to include providing advice to the minister or to the secretary in relation to Australia's current emerging and future skills and training needs and priorities, including in relation to apprenticeships and the adequacy of the Australian system for providing vocational education and training, including training outcomes, undertaking research and analysis on the resourcing and funding requirements for registered training organisations to deliver accessible quality VET courses, undertaking workforce forecasting, accessing workforce skills requirements and undertaking cross-industry workforce analysis and collecting, analysing, sharing and publishing data and other information about these matters. So the, my question to you is, what is the substantial difference in terms of the current and the proposed in relation to these two functions? Minister. Uh, thanks. I think there's two substantial areas that I would focus on. Um, the first one uh, is in workforce planning, and I think a few of the contributions touched on it at the risk of uh, engaging in uh, Senator Roberts' ire. I think that was something that he talked about, but maybe not in a good way. But uh, Jobs and Skills Australia will undertake a workforce planning function that I don't think uh, was represented in the previous model. Uh, and this will support a nationally consistent picture of Australia's workforce needs and the factors contributing to workforce demand and supply imbalances across the labour market. And if I had to probably give an example, I think, of where that could most apply and where it would be most useful in our current challenges uh, is around that workforce we need for the renewable energy future that we want to build as a government. Um, obviously, that's an ambitious agenda. Uh, I know, for instance, the uh, New South Wales, South Australia interconnector that is being built at the moment has had to import labour for that. And that's the first project uh, of many that we need to do uh, if we are to connect these renewables to the grid. Um, so I think that's a really good example of uh, where workforce planning can be effective. I think the other way uh, where uh, this new structure will be more effective uh, is in uh, it will also uh, be uh, different to the previous model uh, and I think it will therefore support better outcomes 
because it does have that strong collaboration um, with those tripartite partners, uh, as we talked about before. Minister, uh, sorry, Senator Cash. Thank you. Uh, just in relation to the budget papers, um, it states in relation to the financial impact statement. Uh, Jobs and Skills Australia will be funded from savings realised by abolishing the role of the National Skills Commissioner. Can you just confirm if more funding will be appropriated to Jobs and Skills Australia after it is legislated? Senator Chisholm. Everything was in the budget, but the additional was the 1.9 through the clean energy capacity study. Um, so that will be um, in addition. Senator Cash. Thank you. And uh, what I now propose to do is uh, move opposition amendments one to four on sheet 1664 uh, by leave together. Is leave granted? Leave's granted. Thank you very much. And I will just speak briefly to them uh, because I know the hour uh, is drawing to a close. And I do thank the Senate for uh, the support that is given to the amendments. Uh, in relation to the functions and jobs of Skill Australia, currently the National Skills Commission uh, is required to provide an annual report to the minister that reflects Australia's current emerging and future workforce skills needs during the calendar year. This is tabled to Parliament. This report provides important information about the state of the Australian economy and provides accountability for government priorities against that context. In terms of the bill we have before us, uh, the government has removed the formal requirement for the Jobs and Skills Australia director to report to Parliament at all. Uh, we say that this is a decrease in trans the transparency of Jobs and Skills Australia relative to the existing National Skills Commissioner, and uh, we believe that parliamentary accountability should be a feature of Jobs and Skills Australia. Uh, in relation to the ministerial directions, uh, there are concerns in the training sector. Uh, that the Albanese government has watered down accountability when it comes to the way in which the minister is able to direct the Jobs and Skills Australia director. Under the National Skills Commissioner Act 2020, the minister was only able to give directions to the commissioner by way of a legislative instrument. Uh, what we are seeing in this bill, and again I appreciate that the amendment will go through so this will change, uh, is Labor are seeking to reduce this oversight in their explanatory memorandum, which notes it is not necessary for these directions to be given in writing. Changes to the explanatory memorandum have removed the need for ministerial direction to the Jobs and Skills Australia director to be given in writing and provided to the parliament. Uh, we say that this is problematic and needs to be addressed. Uh, and certainly stakeholders have recommended that any ministerial direction to the Jobs um, and Skills Australia director given pursuant to the Act must be given in writing. Uh, and certainly we are of the opinion that it is vital that we introduce such accountability yeah. into this new agency. Uh, and as I said, I, I do thank the Chamber because I understand uh, the amendments are being supported. Assistant Minister. Um, thanks, and yes, we do uh, intend to support the amendments. I, I would just make a couple of comments that uh, it was the government's uh, intention to uh, always uh, improve transparency of Jobs and Skills Australia uh, and our ways of working, including through the publication of an annual skills report. Um, I would point out that, unlike our predecessors, we don't need that to be legislated uh, into transparency because we are committed in our actions. Uh, but having said that, um, we are uh, comfortable with supporting this amendment uh, and we understand uh, the nature of the contributions from Senator Cash. That being the case, I'll put the question to Pocock. Thank you, Chair. I seek leave to move two amendments together. Amendment number one on sheet 
1678 and amendment number one on sheet 1680. Senator Pocock, if you may, we will put the first amendment before the chair first, which is that the it is the is it the wish of the committee? No. Question is that amendments one to four on sheet one six six four by leave together be agreed to. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Against, against no. The ayes have it. Senator Pocock. Thank you, Chair. Apologies. I seek leave to move two amendments together. Amendment number one on sheet 1678 and amendment number one on sheet 1680. Is leave granted? Leave's granted. I move the amendments. So the question is that the two amendments be agreed to. Those of that opinion say aye. Against say no. I think the ayes have it. The question now is that the Jobs and Skills Bill as amended be agreed to and the Jobs and Skills Australia National Skills Commissioner Repeal Bill stand as printed. Those of that opinion say aye. Against no. I think the ayes have it. The question now is that the bills be reported. Those of that opinion say aye. Against no. The ayes have it. Senators, I am delighted to report that the committee has considered the Jobs and Skills Australia Bill of 2022 and the Jobs and Skills Australia National Skills Commission a Repeal Bill of 2022 and has agreed with amendments. The question is that the report be adopted. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Those against say no. The ayes have it. The bills be read a third time. The question is that the bills be read a third time. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Against no. The ayes have it. Clerk. Uh, Jobs and Skills Australia Bill 2022, Jobs and Skills Australia National Skills Commissioner Repeal Bill 2022. I believe the question now is that the Senate do now adjourn. Am I correct? Pursuant to order, this, the question now is that the Senate stands adjourned until 9 a.m. tomorrow. See you then, folks. <laughs>